this. Okay, so what that means, the case for what components in government, see I amended it to be for this project here in this room. No, but literally she uses for any project you ever do. And I'm never looking back. Like I've never said this about JavaScript. I didn't do JavaScript prior to two years ago, to be perfectly honest. So my name is Brian Olandek. I generally have too much caffeine in me, and I'm at BTO Pro on all major platforms, and I'm the web components dude. Um, you might have seen my projects before from this little snowflake thing. So I work on a project called Elms Learning Network at Penn State. Um, and we have been doing a lot of Drupal contributions for the last like 15 years almost. Um, so, but I'm not here to talk about that at all. Um, so let's talk about web components. Does anyone know what web components are? Or have an idea? Audience participation, this is good for engagement. Good, okay, so a couple of you. So um, browser support on web components. Web components is actually a standard of the browser. You've probably heard, hey, we should think in terms of components, and we should design things in a component type way. So it's actually a standard in the browser now um, called web components that effectively lets you do this natively. So let's look at a basic example here. So forever, when we had government website X, we would make this gorgeous link, and we would wrap it in a div, and we'd make the background bright yellow, obviously. Um, and then we'd put black text on it, or whatever. So instead of doing that, for this simple button, we would do something like this. So we might make a my button, or gov button, or gov hyphen header hyphen button, something like that. And we basically get our own little API here. Um, so this is leveraging the web component standard to its fullest. That's a custom element, so I can define a brand new HTML tag, and then I can mix in my own properties, and on the other side, underneath, it probably still does do this stuff, right? But I get, um, I get it with this tag. So there's been a lot of buzz lately about web components, um, in a positive way for once, um, and it's because Firefox adopted it in October. And so now that Firefox is adopted it natively, you're seeing a lot more people kind of wake up and go, oh wow, this actually is something that's happening. <coughs> so um, this uh, Medium blog post is about um, using web components in your big company. And I would argue that the government as itself is kind of like a giant company. Um, and so you see, imagine you're following a big company and it has 2,000 plus developers doing 11 apps uh, across multiple countries. Right? So this would be an area where web components might be appealing to you. Um, if you're doing single projects, and a lot of vendors coming in doing single projects, it might not log on to immediately why this is so powerful. But so let's look at solving the design systems problem. Um, and so here's the problem space that we have. Um, my interface designer makes a simple button for us to use. It looks like that. It looks great when I look at it in the demo space. But then my team has to integrate that button uh, X number of times uh, per project, and then for every project we do. And so I've got two buttons there, and we're doing great. They, they both look identical, this is fantastic. But my team will screw this up <laughs> without fail, okay? They're gonna pull all kind of CSS in, and it's gonna look hideous. I do I know? Because I would pull in CSS and make it look hideous, and the designer would be deal. So what web components solve to help us, uh, help us deal with this issue? And so parts of the specification itself just naturally solve this problem. Um, Shadow DOM means that each element is its own little container. So imagine all that CSS gobbledygook that I was writing before <coughs> to lead through isn't even possible. So now when my designer is working in a vacuum, that is exactly how it's going to look in production. There should be wild applause at that case. So, um, <laughs> yay, yes, oh, good. Okay, so custom elements make HTML semantic. So you can make your own HTML tags, and then if you view source, you'll be like, oh, that's where the button is, instead of leaving comments all over the place to attempt to figure out where the button is. Um, and both of these together help us uh, scope JavaScript more uh, compactly. So web components keep design intentional and make design sustainable, which makes web professionals happy. So now when I drink copious amounts of caffeine, it's because I really love my work. I hated my work about two or three years ago because it was just unsustainable. So for project managers though, um, accessibility becomes manageable. Does anyone in government hear about accessibility? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so um, the reason it becomes sustainable is I've now got this tag Every, and every web property that I've made, that tag becomes, oh, oh shoot, we forgot alt data in this one instance. 
and now I have to do that 100 times. Or I update the reference to that tag, and I've updated it in 100 places. So we're cranking through accessibility issues like it's nothing now. Uh, we got a ding on an accessibility issue in a button. I used that button 53 times. Previously, a disability expert would have said, you've got 53 accessibility issues in this. I couldn't just, OK, it's fixed. I didn't have to think about where that was. Just the cognitive load of that being gone is enormous with this. Um, and so we've seen maintenance costs collapse, uh, the cost to develop and time to develop collapse to almost nothing. Um, things that were rapid prototypes before that would have taken us three months to do, we do in 25 minutes. Because these tags operate under the same principle as any other HTML tag. So you make a custom element, you use it in another one, and another one, and another one, and for the first time ever, that's sustainable. You can actually re-leverage every piece of code. It's not like, oh, let's figure out how to make that hideous button example that I had before each time. And so all future projects start to cost less um, as a result of this. So that makes web managers happy. So in our context, where we've seen this, is uh, this is Elm Floating Network, it's this hideous visual. It's just lots of systems, it's a system of systems. Um, any deployment of Elms Learning Network tends to have like 100 plus Drupal sites. And so what we were running into internally is, hey, that's a card, right? Everyone can, can tell that's a card, it has a button, and it's got an image on it. And then we make another system that has a card and a button and an image. And then we go into our template files, and I don't expect anyone to be able to read this. That's the point of the joke, is that it's like 50 lines to make that stupid card, and then it changes somehow for in the design. And then the team has to go and fix all this gobbledygook across seven plus systems and make sure it looks the same. So we were getting that button fragmentation even when we had a pretty decent process. So this is that same card now with web components. It's four lines. And even just that aspect that we can now go in, and this is way more readable, right? It's a paper hyphen card that's just semantically much more readable. So um, this helps us escape the Drupal design island. Much as I love Drupal for things, it's terrible with front end. Um, <laughs> it lets you reuse parts of things in seven and eight and six if you've got any of that out there because you're not tied to the, the design paradigm of that system. And so as a result, you can use it in other content management systems if you wanted to escape this island. <laughs> or across uh, JavaScript libraries too. So web components have really high compatibility with other JavaScript libraries. So if you're doing an Angular project, you could maybe make some design assets in web components and plug them in. But who's using this uh, is what always comes up. So BYU uh, has been way ahead of the rest of the industry, I feel like, on this. Uh, they've been using web components in production for about three years. This is their top level domain. They have 90% brand consistency as a result of this. So someone in the office goes, oh, it's not that color blue anymore, it's, it's three hues more. They update it in one place, they have these sitting on a CDN, 90% of their web properties update that day. This is transformational what you can do with this very simple approach. Um, if you unfortunately use Comcast products, then um, <laughs> the Xfinity system uses XC hyphen header, which is a custom element. So that's how they're getting uh, design conformity when they're giving you a terrible product. Um, <laughs> then when we go on to uh, YouTube, maybe you've used YouTube before. Uh, about two years ago, YouTube switched over to custom elements and web components, which is when we said, okay, maybe this will actually work. I guess a couple people use YouTube. Um, and as a weird one, if you actually inspect a tab in Chromium, um, the Chromium browser itself is starting to be built out of web components, which is kind of trippy, but it helps illustrate that these things are uh, really reversible. So in one of our interfaces, we've got buttons everywhere, and so we just boil those buttons up to be web components now, and then in a template file, Right? We have LRA and sys button in that case, paper button, iron icon, things like that. So can we use this though? We being government in this case. So I dug through some data on analytics.usa.gov um, and assembled this slide here. So over the last 90 days, uh, web components would work natively in 84.6% of all browsing traffic. That means no polyfills, they just render correctly. Um, with polyfills, that picks up another 12.3. So not, not to say, <laughs> you should just abandon 4%, or sorry, 3.1% of web traffic. But it's really getting close to the time to like, let's start talking about this for use in projects, right? That's a progressive enhancement type of approach right here. We go, there's 3.1% of our traffic that we need to handle a different, uh, a different way. So looking at more global numbers, they're pretty much on par. 
Although from my own testing, 98.26% uh, of global traffic should be able to handle web components in some way. I think you can get up to 99. And so why I think the time is right to really jump on this is obviously we have to support IE Edge, that's where a lot of that is coming from, right? We've got like IE 7 floating around, unfortunately, somewhere in government. <laughs> More than anywhere else. But, so on desktops, we see there are about 15% of desktop users in global traffic are coming in these other browsers. But things to keep in mind, uh, has anyone heard that uh, Edge is basically being hollowed out and thrown away? Yay! <laughs> Yay! So, Edge, Edge is going to be running Chromium on Steam. Um, their preview builds that they've been leaking out are really promising and uh, really fast. And so, uh, basically, you'll have the Edge logo shipped over there. So then the only thing you need to worry about is IE 11. Something else to keep in mind, Windows 7 was end of life, 2020, January. <laughs> That's wonderful. IE 11 is the highest browser version there. That's where a lot of your usage of IE 11 is coming from, and those older versions of browsers. So when that goes end of life, you're gonna dig into this data and see that Windows 7 is used by 11% of government traffic. That's going to fall off the face of the earth. People are gonna move to hopefully Windows 10, which just shifts those numbers even lower. Um, and did you know that Microsoft is like, you know, we, we didn't want to support the contract on IE 10 either, so we killed it early. Um, which is not to say that they're going to do that with IE 11, but they've kind of been virtue signaling they're going to do that with IE 11. <laughs> um, so this is from their developer blog, which they immediately had to post like, oh, no, 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 we didn't mean we were actually getting rid of it, just uh, feeling it out. Um, and this is from February. So, We've been putting in place a progressive enhancement strategy with our own CMS that we've been building. Um, and so if we apply it to the numbers that you all have, uh, I'm basically saying, if you're an Internet Explorer, I'm acting like you don't have JavaScript anymore. And so whatever I would serve to you don't have JavaScript users is what I serve by design to IE users. Um, evergreen browsers that get these things natively, that's 80% of traffic. And so you're looking today, if I were to apply this technique, um, that when I send them my blog, it looks hideous, but it works. Um, if I send it to Edge, which it eventually will be running Chromium, it looks decent. And then if I were to ship it to something fun and wonderful, it looks like a real stinking website that you could click around and go to, which everything in the website is a web component. Um, so they just work like normal HTML. Uh, so my guess one year from now, we're gonna be looking at a no JavaScript fallback version where you've got about 10% of all travel um, would have to hit that, and 90% would be just working natively. And then two years from now, I'm gonna guess we're gonna be at about 95 and five. So it's not to say you shouldn't care about these things, but those can be solved with like a progressive enhancement strategy. But Brian, is it accessible? Uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, <laughs> back, a great Tina question. Yes, it's accessible. Uh, it's actually very highly accessible because whenever we run into an accessibility issue, we can just kind of know exactly the brick to go in, the Lego piece to fix. Um, so if you're starting or planning a project, talk about your design and development needs across your portfolio, right? How many projects do you have like the same car or the same header or banner? might be doing these types of inventories anyway. Maybe look at web components as a way of solving that, um, as opposed to just saying, here, style things this way. Um, start small, so we started with a single icon on a web page, which is another radically different way that you can attack this problem. If I were to build my website in React or Angular or Vue, I'm probably talking about rebuilding the entire system architecture. Web components let us start with little tiny Lego pieces. So we started just slowly hollowing out our own systems, progressively decoupling instead of these expensive decoupled properties we care about. Um, and be mindful of progressive enhancement along the way, right? You can have HTML sit on the page, older browsers will look at those tags and be like, I don't know who you are, you're a bit, we're good. Um, and so really there's no reason not to use web components. And I know what you're saying, other than your overtime, right? That blog that you showed looked well, great. Thank you, Ben, for pointing that out. And so that's because it's entirely built in web components. So if you right click and inspect, you can see that every part of that is built out of components. And we didn't just buy in on this a little bit. Uh, we've made 168 elements to date. There's over 2,000 now on webcomponents.org. So we're leveraging other people's components. This is basically Drupal modules, but for all of the web. Um, so I highly recommend going there. So when, you, when it comes to real project reuse, um, I'm just gonna click play on this and go, that's a card, that's a button, that's an input field. 
These are literally the identical pieces of code to what I was showing before, not some abstraction, not, oh, maybe I'll repurpose this. Everything we use in the development of our sites now is repurposable to other sites that we use, like the code directly. <laughs> so we've got cards, we've got banners, we've got buttons. This is a whole editor we built it's called Hacks, um, which is a single tag in the browser. Um, and obviously there's a lot more going on than that in that tag, but just the idea that all of this becomes portable. If I want to put some silly meme about the space station coming off of NASA, every piece of this is repurposable. That meme we can put on government websites. That's the biggest takeaway from this. <laughs> <laughs> what is HACS? HACS is short for Headless Authoring Experience. Um, so our single tag, which is illustrated there from hackstheweb.org, which is a website built entirely out of web components you can go to and know that every piece of it is repurposable in any other project. Um, so the editor itself is used to build documentation about the editor, um, which kind of means I have to care about usability and accessibility. Um, but so all the tags that are on there, like we have an amazingly accessible video player on the homepage. Uh, if you want a video hyphen player tag and you go and download it, the, the reference to it from us, then you get this awesome transcript searchable uh, video player. So um, with that, um, I hope that sets up for why you would want to come to your training that's after lunch. Um, or for access during lunch. Michael Potter is over there, just me helping with the training. Uh, we're gonna get see, uh, people set up with tooling so they can build their own sustainable element portfolios. If you don't want to do that or can't, um, we have a web-based version on StackWits where we <coughs> play around, we're gonna just dig into what the process is of building these things, what it looks like to have web components talking to each other, some of the nuances between different libraries as to why they're all pluggable. And then there's also other opportunities throughout the week. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing a moth on creating sustainable agnostic uh, web component development. I don't know why the heck I named it that. That's a horrifically long title. Um, and then at 11, so we're going we're gonna to talk about building portfolios of elements that way. Then we're going to go to lunch, and then afterwards, we're going to build some more because we've got nothing else going on. And then uh, Wednesday at 4 p.m., um, we've got a make web development fun again with web components talk. And then Thursday, there's a general web component talk. So thank you for having me. If you have any questions, because I know we all want to just get to lunch. Uh, you got oh, I got seven minutes. So if anyone has any questions, then you can, Elijah can go harass me for another three hours. Okay? <laughs>